Hello, my name's Naomi, also known as The Soloist. I'm going to show you how to make a 3D lined hanging joey pouch. Um, it's quite easy once you know the process. We're working with two pieces of fabric. So one is your heavier weight outer fabric, more like a canvas, um, a cotton drill, a denim, and the lining is a lighter weight cotton um, or a flannelette. Um, in summer, maybe more a summer weight cotton. Um, most important is that it's all made out of 100% cotton and you want to pre-wash your fabrics as well just to get rid of any nasties, nasty chemicals, any shrinkage as well and any excess dye. Um, so two rectangles are all we're working with and I'm going to show you how to put that all together. Um, you can see we've got your lining coming through, all your seams are tucked away on the inside. We've got a curve happening through the back here to mimic the um, shape of a, a pouch. Um, a carer is going to pop a rod through the top there, so we're going to be leaving an opening through here. I'm going to make sure these stitches are nice and secure because that wants to be able to hold the weight of the joey. Um, there's two different sizes as well. So wallabies, here's a little miniature version. Might be easy to see on camera. Um, so two sizes for wallabies, you want to cut your rectangles 65 centimetres by 105 centimetres. The kangaroo pouches are a little bit bigger. They're 75 centimetres by 130 centimetres. Um, the one that I've got here that I've made here, which is my first attempt at a full scale um, kangaroo pouch, uh, wallaby pouch, this is a wallaby pouch. So that's 65 by 105 centimetres. Um, so here's some fabric I prepared earlier. Um, I've got my heavier weight cotton drill here. I'm gonna fold it right sides together and then my lining fabric, 100% cotton. Um, seam allowances we're working with um, 100, uh, 1.5 centimetres. And where I've just drawn the where I'm going to be stitching down here. I've used a dinner plate to create this curve, so that's going to be the back of the pouch there. You want to be sewing that um, on both of those right with your right sides together. So we're going to sew those separately. So make sure your fabric's nice and lined up, and that you are securing the stitches both at the beginning and when you also. When you're also finished at the end, you can make sure all the stitches are secure. Round the curve, 1.5 centimetres is the seam allowance on these. Round the curve, just like that. Round the curve, just like that. So this is the, um, the folded edge, I should say. So if this is the open side. So we're folding the curved seam along the folded edge here. And so I just want to say, if you can hear me, that because this is actually folded in half, it leaves me to believe that you could actually use two pieces of fabric and then just fitting them together like this. So if you find you don't have big pieces of fabric, I'm left to believe you could just them together like this, it doesn't need to be folded. There's not too many processes in this. I'm going to try and get through it as quickly as possible for you. So now we are turning the outer fabric, the heavier fabric, right side out. No need to iron your seams or anything like that. Um, and so now we've got the lining fabric, we're going to um, basically pop one inside the other, so right sides are together, and you want to be lining up these seams that you've created. So right sides together, seam there, seam there. Just tuck that all in. Okay, so there are instructions on the um, website that I'll link to. I've actually changed the production method a little bit because I just think this is a much easier way for you all to sew these together. Um, okay, so here I go. So once again, 1.5 seam, centimeter seam allowance. You're gonna be sewing around this front curved edge all the way up. Um, hot tip if you are sewing um, with two different fabrics, the fabric that's got a bit more give um, is usually better to pop down on your feed dogs here because it's going to tend to, um, you know, gather it properly as you're sewing so it's not stretching out too much. 
and that'll keep the seam matching up nicely. Um, this is my first <laughs> sewing tutorial, so you will have to, yeah, here I go. <laughs> so one to put five centimeters, make sure you're locking your stitches on at the beginning then. All the way down, use pins if you want. I should, I don't use pins in my dressmaking, but I will humor the process. There we go, so a pin at the, that seam there is handy. Pin them all, pin, pin them all along the way as you go if you like. There we go in. Make sure your um yeah your tension's not too loose. Your stitch length um is appropriate. You want to make sure these are sewn nice and um securely. And the corner. Hmm, that moved out too well. I don't think I'm going to win any prizes for this sewing. All right, so you've sewn along that whole edge there. That's your curve happening here. You don't need to trim that off. Um, I'm also, this is slightly different to what the written instructions say. I'm going to get you all to sew your um, 1.5 centimeter seam allowance across the top here. So that's where the pole's going to end up going. I'm just thinking for a moment there. All right, so 1.5. We're gonna leave a gap at the top here. Because we're gonna bag this whole thing out. Turn it inside out. All right, so just start to pull on the top. Whenever you decide, just cut off there, back stitch, leave a gap. You're gonna be pulling this whole thing through this hole, so make sure there's enough space. You don't have to wrestle with the fabric too much. Looking back on, you want these, these seam to meet up as well. That's going to be the center back seam there, the back of the pack. Got a little bit of a, a little bit of an overhang here. It hasn't sewn perfectly, but that's fine. That'll all get cut from the inside. Stitch there. Okay, so you can see all the seams are sewn. Everything's sewn at the moment, except this little gap over here. So just pop your hand in, grab your fabric. You're gonna turn it inside out. Again, this is different to the, um, the written instructions. The written instructions have got you sewing, um, folding in all your seam allowances and it's like kind of sandwiches, it, sandwiching it together and then sewing it. I find that this is just much better. All right, so turning it all out. Figure out what's going on. Get those little corners out. This is the top of the pouch. That's your opening. These are the two corners you want to make sure they're turned out nicely. Get a crochet hook or a pair of scissors in there if you want, just to um, finesse them a little. Oh, so the pouch is taking shape. I'll just organize it a little so you can see what's going on. Okay, so that's your curved edge there. The lining's happening on the inside. So now what we're going to do is, oh, let's sew this opening close. So you're just sandwiching that seam allowance. Raw edges in there. Just give that a little stitch. Cool. All right. So now we are going to create this folded edge. This one I prepared earlier. So we're just folding it back, essentially. And then we're going to stitch 
all the way around. So there's nice, smooth, I, I'm assuming that, you know, Joey's prefer, prefer this kind of curved edge. No seam allowances. All right, so if I can recall the measurements of the top of my head, we are going to be folding it in half. That's your center back seam. Over here. That little corner's going to drive me crazy. Um, over here, we just want to line up those edges. And we're going to be stitching down. There's a little join here. We're just going to be stitching down to create that. So, four centimeters. They're coming in four centimeters. I've got a ruler on the side of my machine here. So four centimeters, I'll pin it so you're going on. And we're actually going to sew down eight centimeters. So eight centimeters. Cool. So we're just going like that. This is going to open out. And I hope you're all following along. It's all making sense right now. Okay. So back stitching, lock stitching your stitches, four centimeters in from the edge, eight centimeters down. And I think that this is going to be quite a load bearing spot on the pouch, so double reinforce that. Cool, so now we are going to, you can see that, that's created that opening. Now we're going to take all of this Get those little edges out. Just roll that back a bit. So now we're just folding this back. So we're gonna be sewing four centimeters. This whole um, fold back. It's gonna be the same consistent um, turn back the whole way. So I'll just pin it for everybody's benefit. Measure if you like. For the sake of this video, I'm just trying to do it a little bit speedier. Um, no need to iron anything. Ideally, you want this to be matching up. I promise my next one will be better. <laughs> cool, turning it around. So this is all four centimeters or thereabouts. All right, that will do it. So you can see it's starting to turn into a joy batch. Sweet. So um, you're gonna, I found with making the last one, it's definitely easier to start from the top here. Um, <laughs> All right, so just on the edge, so I'm using basically a six mil, six mil from this folded edge here, seamed edge. All right, so tacking on. All the way, just keep holding it in place. Make sure you're obviously not sewing through anything else behind there. I do appreciate that a lot of you are um, either beginner or learner sewer. And yeah, sometimes you do actually manage to sew through the wrong layers. So just feeding that all around. Oh, I'm trying to keep this as tidy as possible. Probably going to be a little bit of bunching on the fabric, but I'm not sure Joey's mind. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Show you on this one here. Yeah. We're just stitching that all the way around, all the way back up. So there's going to be a bit of bulk here. Hopefully your machine can handle it. And 
I'll just take a moment as well, um, in case any of you are interested in making the little bat wraps or bat burritos as I've I'm fondly calling them. Um, I've actually created a photo tutorial of those as well. I do um, understand that the bat wraps are in high demand and I'm sure that demand will be ongoing as with all of these um, wildlife um, rescue pouches and things that we're all busy making. So if, yeah, I've got a photo tutorial of how to make the bat wraps. They're super simple. They're 100% flannelette, 100% uh, cotton flannelette. They don't require too much fabric. Super simple, if you want to have a look for that one and make some of those as well. So there is our top stitching. We've got this fold back. We're getting really close now, guys. So this is our top edge. This is where our um, rod is gonna go through, which I hope someone is onto supplying all the carers with lots of hanging contraptions and rods for all these pouches that we're making. So we're gonna be sewing across the top now. So we start up the top here, close to the edge. Um, nine centimeters from the edge, um, from their side, we're gonna start, make sure it's nice and reinforced. We're gonna sew across and finish nine, nine centimeters from this edge, that's leaving a gap through the middle. And then here, 10 centimeters from the side, we're gonna sew across, 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 see here, where, that, um, where the opening is. Um, and finishing 10, minutes, 10 centimeters before that edge as well. Um, apparently that stops the pouch from rolling. I'm not sure. That's what it says in the instructions. Um, okay, let's go. So, just organize your cell. Make sure all these are rolled out. matching up. That's your front seam, that's your back seam, that's where the back curve is. Matching all of that up. Um, I'm going to pin that just for the sake of it really. Um, okay, so if you recall I was saying nine centimeters is what they're requesting um, from that edge. So nine centimeters basically here. And nine centimeters from the other side. All right, so make sure you're doing nice, um, short, strong stitches. Uh, we want to, it says to sew as close to the edge as possible, so I'm going to keep it at maybe six mil through there from the edge. Um, we'll take that pin out, so we're starting nine centimeters in from here. And Back stitch, we're coming up across, over, hopefully the machine likes all that bulky fabric, across, take that pin out, back stitch, and because we want these to survive a lot of washing and wearing, a lot of, you know, kangaroo and wallaby use, I'm going to stitch over that again. Built to last. Cool, so that one, you can see we've got our gaps here. And then 10 centimeters, measure if you like, but you're basically going to be starting in just before there. And I think it measures 10 centimeters from the top. Nine, it's probably going to be slightly different for everyone but that's about nine centimeters from here. So you wanna be finishing just before that seam opening there, just to make sure it's nice and strong. Cool, so basically nine centimeters down from the top edge and 10 centimeters in from the side. So I'm gonna start like there. Sorry if that's not too, enough, particular enough for everyone, but it's literally one centimeter in from that one. So down here. So nine centimeters, 10 centimeters. Lock stitch on. Coming across the top of this opening. Take that pin out. We're gonna come back and reinforce that. Don't worry if it, I will try not to worry if it's 
gathering up on in there and then I start watching things at the top. Probably got best practice. Um, yeah, so just in from there and back to the top. Again, let's go back and reinforce. Let's make sure it's nice and strong because these are going to be, you know, holding the weight of a lot of different size wallabies. Um, like I said earlier, the kangaroo pouch is slightly bigger and they'll be holding the weight of the majority of kangaroos. Okay, so reinforcing that there. Hopefully I'm not chatting too much and you all can concentrate. Anyway, there we go. Dare I say we finished the 3D lined hanging jolly pouch. Um, let me grab that hole just to illustrate. Kara is going to pop that through. It's going to simply slide up. I like to think these are little like ventilation gaps. Now I just hope that this has been recording. <laughs> There's our curve through the back. All your seams are on the inside. Nice soft edge out here for the jolly. You can see the stitching through here. So we've got these gaps from here. Awesome. Good luck everyone. Um, please message me if I can clarify anything. I'll try and put up some photos, create a photo tutorial as well. Um, good luck. Thank you. Bye.